video facing the wrong way. Hey you guys, it's Elise. Excited to have you on with me live today. We are discussing taking your wealth to the next level and what it means to be a poor thinker versus a wealthy or rich thinker. What happens that's different in the minds of the person who is poor or the person who is wealthy? Have you guys ever wondered this? Have you ever thought about that? I remember in my 20s, I used to clean houses in, neighbor, in this neighborhood of multi-million dollar houses. And I was putting myself through school. I would nanny, I would clean houses, I would get up early and work in a bakery. And so, here's the thing. I would always create in my head a story about these people who were wealthy and they didn't live here or blah, blah, blah. Like, all kinds of crazy things, right? And um, like one of the things people would always say here is all the Californians are coming and buying up all the real estate here, right? And people were very resentful of those who had money. And so I adopted some of those beliefs and I remember thinking this is not going to create wealth if I am judging those who have wealth. Do you guys see that? So I was uh, became conscious of the way that I was thinking about people who had wealth. And what I realized was I was sabotaging myself from creating the wealth because of those judgments that I had. <laughs> so uh, do you guys relate to this at all? Because I'm telling you, this will create an upper limit for you. When you're thinking about how do I take my business to the next level and make more money? How do I bring in more money and abundance into my life? Well, we've got to become clear first on if there's any underlying beliefs that you're holding that are holding you back. So I wanted to cover a little bit with you all um, some of the things, some of the ways that people think. And poor people resent the rich. They judge them right? They criticize them. They do terrible things like destroy their property sometimes, right? Vandalize. Or, I mean, it's ridiculous. But people around the United States have that mentality. And I feel like there was this weird shift that happened sometime in the last 50 to 100 years. Because historically, in America, people were, they were entrepreneurial minded. They were wild spirits. They were generally immigrating here from other countries um, to escape persecution in one form or another and create new opportunity, right? So think about that type of mindset that people had to create, had to have when they came here to the United States. Think about what our country was founded on. Think about those belief systems that they held. And now think about today. What's going on? I mean, I, I sit back and I look at our culture and I am just like completely mind blown at how many people are so critical or judgmental of anyone who has any kind of money. You see it all the time. Anyone who's successful, Americans will nitpick them. They will say they're too fat, they're rude, they're like whatever. Like for example, Super Bowl, Lady Gaga, she's very successful, very talented, and people were saying that she was too flabby. I mean, give me a break. It's jealousy, right? So the first thing I want you all to identify in yourself is where are you holding judgment towards people who may be wealthy? And, and this could be anyone that you consider more successful than yourself. Because this is what you'll notice. As you start to become more successful, more people around you will judge you and criticize you because that is our cultural conditioning today. That's what you're up against. But I will tell you this, that you can be spiritual, happy, giving, full of joy, a big heart, and wealthy. You can have both. It's not one or the other. A poor mindset thinks it's one or the other. Right? So where do you fall when it comes to that? Are you in that mindset of belief that you can be wealthy, you can give big, you can be spiritual, you can have a relationship with God and Jesus Christ? Think about that. Where do you fall in that belief system because there's a lot of weird stuff when it comes to money here in the United States. We've just got to be honest about that. That that is what will hold you back if you are not consciously aware of it and rewiring it. Okay? So that's first um, the first thing I want to share with you guys. Are you loving this? Click the hearts. 
type me your favorite emoji there in the comments. Click the share button. I think there's a lot of people that need to hear this message today. So I want you to take an action step, right? Now the action step is this. Think of someone that you admire who is wealthy and type their name in the comments. Go ahead, type their name. We've got 40 people watching, don't be shy. <laughs> so I wanna see who do you admire that is wealthy? No judgment around if you think they're good or bad wealthy, they're just wealthy, you admire them. Well, clearly if you admire them, you think it's good. <laughs> okay, good. Um, okay, great, awesome. Ruth says, my opinion on wealth has changed even more since watching you. You are someone who I feel holds these ideals and you're still down to earth. You've made it seem real to be wealthy and dot, dot, dot. I'm not sure what else because it ended. Um, Kim admires Oprah. Thank you. Comment, you guys. Put the name in there. Who is it that you admire that is wealthy? <laughs> Me. Thank you. <laughs> Your uncle. Awesome, Suzanne. You guys, it's super important to identify people that you admire that are wealthy. Okay? Now, here's what I want you to think. I want you to think about do you believe that those people that you admire are more worthy of wealth in their lives than you are? Let that one sink in. Do you believe that those people that you admire are more worthy of being wealthy and of having success in their lives than you are? Type in a yes or a no. This is a moment of transparency, I know. <laughs> okay, so type that in. Are they more worthy of it? Because I'm gonna remind you this. When we are born, we are not born with a stamp across the forehead that says, this one's worthy, this one's unworthy, right? None of us have that stamp on our heads that says, this one's worthy or this one's unworthy. Think about that for a moment, okay? <laughs> I'm making you cry. So, now here's my challenge to you. Because a wealthy person, it has the ability to receive and to give, right? So you're adopting those new mindsets of a person who is wealthy. And it doesn't matter what level of abundance you already have in your life. There is always more available to you. Always. Because the universe is abundant and it does not discriminate on who receives the wealth. Okay? So think about it like this. When the rain falls... It falls on all the roofs of all the houses, right? The ones that are more structurally sound do not leak. <laughs> the rain doesn't discriminate where it falls. It just falls across the valley. Does that make sense? So that is the, the, the concept of money. Money is available to you. Money is available to me. Money is available to all of us. It's the judgments that we hold that keep us from receiving what, we're, what we believe we're worthy of or not, okay? So here's your homework. Your homework is you will send a letter or post on the Facebook wall of the person that you said you admire today. You will go and share publicly your respect for them and why they, you admire them. What is it about that person that you admire? Because here is the beautiful thing, you guys. You may have heard me teach this before. What you admire in others is a core value that you have within yourself. So now, all it is is a matter of identifying what that value is that you admire in another person. And you compliment them for it, right? Because we're not going into judgment about people that are wealthy. We are admiring their traits. And now, that trait is within you. That's right. You might need to watch this video again. Definitely click the share button because a lot of people need to take this lesson to heart, right? And um, so here's the thing. This is the really beautiful thing. When you start to realize that rich people admire rich people, poor people judge and criticize and tear down those who are successful. And you get to choose which part of, the, of humanity you want to be part of, right? Once you realize that and you have those conscious awarenesses, when you are maybe caught in a moment of realizing somebody, that you're in judgment about somebody's success or it's for them or they're more worthy or they're luckier, right? Right? Then you can start to say, hang on, wait a minute. The universe is so abundant and that abundance is there for me as well. Kayla, thanks for clicking the share button on this video. Um, so this exercise, I believe, is so powerful 
because what you admire in others is within you. And when you identify what that is that you're admiring in other people and you start to cultivate that aspect of yourself and you surround yourself with those who succeed in life, you become the average of the five people that you are most influenced by. And here's the beautiful thing, it's your choice who you are influenced by. So another challenge to you is limit or eliminate your exposure to television. It's mindless trash. Limit or eliminate your exposure to scrolling social media unless you are using it for your own personal development or building your network and reaching out to more people, right? Um, limit or eliminate your exposure to the news. You guys, the news is not going to change your life. Stop watching it. <laughs> it's not going to change your life. What will change your life is reading, 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 okay? Because these things are not taught in school, are they? Don't you wish they were? And if you have kids, you have the opportunity to influence them in this way. Rhonda, thanks for clicking the share button on the video. Um, hey, Lisa. So I'm really excited about this topic because I believe that once I had these awarenesses for myself and I tapped into the unlimited abundance, I knew for a fact that it was meant for me to be a millionaire. I knew it. And I had to realize where I held judgment towards people that had become successful in life. And I was one of the people that held judgment and criticized. I am the first to admit that, okay? And once I changed that judgment, once I started to bless those who were successful, bless their families, bless their work, right? Abundance rained down. Why? Because when you bless others, God blesses you. When you, are, uh, uh, when you allow other people to live their gifts in the world, guess what? You could live yours too. Why? Because subconsciously, you won't sabotage yourself because you think other people will criticize you as well. Hey, Deborah, thanks for sharing the video. Um, so does that make sense? Like if you're judging other people or you're creating a story about why you think they've been successful and you haven't and they're just lucky or you know they know more people or they have a better education or whatever BS you're telling yourself. Once you become aware of that, you can stop it immediately and then you create the truth. The truth is that you are worthy of success. You are just as talented. You are just as capable. You are just as connected and God will bless you as he has blessed others. And here's the thing. When you take the time to see someone who's succeeded and you say, God, please bless them, bless their family, bless those kids, bless their job, bless their drive to work or to town or to shop or whatever, bless, bless, bless. Whenever you have that moment of, of the, that um, like envy, you guys, right? Whenever you have a moment of envy, when you see someone else succeeding, and you're like, whoa, hang on, I'm feeling that, that, like, that tension, wherever you guys, where do you guys feel that? sense of jealousy or envy when you see other people succeed and you're not, right? Wherever it is, um, ask for God to just come in and shine that light in your heart or your chest, whatever it is that feels tight. And then you think of that person and you bless them, right? Bless them. Bless Lady Gaga for doing what she does, right? Bless Donald Trump for the success he's created. Bless Michael Jackson for the sex success that he had created. Bless whoever has succeeded in this world. Because I'll tell you one thing I know for darn sure. It is a hard row to hoe when you decide that you are going to step into your calling and you're going to live your greatness and you're going to create the wealth and abundance that you deserve. There will be resistance because our culture is against you. I don't know why, but that is what it is. So the sooner we can put that out on the table and you can identify it and then you can get into the, the, the arena or join the team of bless and release, <laughs> you know, where you can bless the people that talk about you behind your back. You can lay awake at night and when they pop into your head because somebody told you they said something about you, you can say, bless them, bless their family and bless their work, right? Bless their health. Give them continued abundant blessings in their finances. I'm telling you guys, it is freeing. You will be let free. And when you are able to give like that, you will be able to receive. And that's what it takes. Because if you're not blessing others and you're finding yourself in judgment, criticism, spinning out into negativity, well, what happens? It eats you up. 
it eats you up and you don't have the creative energy and the mindset in, to create what you're meant to create in the world. Do you see that? So once you get on that team of bless and release and you bless those who talk about you, criticize you, and judge you, maybe they've abused you, you bless them. And you ask for God to release you from spinning out into negativity thinking about them. Okay? You guys with me on this? Post a little picture or your favorite emoji. Maybe it's the sun. Maybe it's the prayer hands. Maybe it's the praise hands. <laughs> Post them in the comments. I want to see if this is resonating with you. If you have a question, please post it in the comments. If I don't get to it today, I will come back to it later. Ruth says, I feel like this is an honest statement, but I do bless others' success, admire it, and I'm happy for them. But I actually feel guilty when I succeed and um, others on my team don't. So I feel like I need to dot, dot, dot. And again, it cut off, so I don't know what you said in your full comment. But Ruth, what I'm thinking is, um, Deanna, thanks for sharing. What I'm thinking is, the reason you're feeling guilty is, oh, oh, and I'm going to just put this out there and it may not resonate with you, but it will resonate with somebody. Um, okay, the poor mentality is there's not enough to go around, right? The poor mentality is that we got to be real careful with our finances, etc. So what I'm wondering is, is if you feel like maybe there's not enough success to go around for them, but here's the truth. People will either go up with you because they choose to, or they won't. Yes. Um, Ruby, post on their profile if you want it to be public. If you want people to see who you admire, post it publicly. If you want to do it privately, do it privately. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. But I do challenge everyone watching. Send an, um, send an email or post publicly on their profile who you admire, who is wealthy, who has created abundance in their lives, and tell them why. And then write in your journal, okay, now my journal of notes here, write in your journal what it is that you admired about that person, and then I want you to write a new I am statement, I am dot dot dot, whatever it is that you admired about them, because here's the truth, the personality traits that you see in those who are successful and those who aren't successful yet are going to be the same personality traits. I was giving, I was humble, I was taking care of the sick, poor, and the widow before I became a millionaire. I was doing that because that's my heart. And I'll also make um, obvious to you guys, maybe you already know this, but most people who hit the lottery, okay, most poor people, or poor, poor persons thinking, play the lottery because they don't think they're worthy of creating wealth, right? So that instead they play the lottery on hope that they create a paycheck or whatever, a win. But the majority of them lose the money within the first year of receiving it when they win the lottery. Did you guys know that? Yeah, that's crazy. So having money just <laughs> amplifies whatever your personality traits are before you have the money, right? So I'm just saying, you want to get the right mindset and the right heart as you start creating your wealth. Suzanne, don't play the lottery. Invest in you. That money should not go into the lottery. It should go into you because you have a far greater chance of creating wealth for yourself than winning the lottery. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> um, wealthy people call the lottery poor man's tax because the poor people play it. Don't play it. It's not going to create wealth for you. I guarantee that. Okay? Instead, invest in you. There is no better investment, in my opinion, than in your personal, inv in your personal development. No better investment. That's paid off for me tenfold. Because I know I wouldn't be the woman I am today if I hadn't invested in myself along the way in terms of my personal development. So worthwhile. So let's see. All right, here's a question before we end today. Do you know people that mock, judge, or criticize those that become successful? Do you know people that mock, judge, or criticize those that become successful? Now, Think about why they're doing that. Partly, kitty kitty, kitty kitty, come here, Good kitty baby, kitty kitty, come here, come here. <laughs> okay, so partly people do that because they've given up on their own dreams. 
And when people give up on their own dreams, they can become very nasty towards others. And we see that on the internet all day long. <laughs> That's why I say that surfing on social media probably isn't very productive for you in terms of your mindset because we've got a lot of the haters on there that are just going off all the time because they have nothing else to complain about. And so, think about the people that you are allowing to influence you, okay? Uh, and then adopt this new attitude, write this down. Either they move up with you or I move on. Either they move up or I move on, okay? Write that down. Either they move up or I move on. Remember, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. That can include mentors like myself um, and my influence. You go back and watch all my videos. I've had tons of people message me saying they've gone back and watched all my videos or they watch one a day and it really helps them to stay in the right mindset, right? That mindset of abundance and blessing and, and being lined up with God's purpose and calling on your life. Now, I can be one of your five but you gotta tap in every day, right? Or maybe it's another um, public speaker or somebody who's really motivational to you. Tap, t just, just check in with them every day in terms of what are they posting on social media. You don't have to physically be in the room with the person to allow them to influence you. You could be listening to podcasts or audiobooks, okay? So if your hands are busy but your mind is free you can be listening and filling up your mind with the right thinking okay so again either they move up or i move on and if you want to fly with the eagles don't swim around with the ducks <laughs> okay i love that one the poor will hang out with the poor and the rich will hang out with the rich why because we are the average of the five and I'll tell you what, that is one of the secrets that the wealthy know. That they are influenced by the people in situations around them. Um, wealthy people tend to be entrepreneurs. They tend to create in the world rather than consume. Now this is important because if you're building your own business and you're spending too much time consuming information instead of creating and helping solve problems, you're not going to create the wealth that you so desire. Okay, so think about that. Oh, Rachel, thank you for sharing. You guys, share who you love um, that motivates you right here in the comments. Rachel Pitt just shared Louis Hayes. Louise Hayes. Louise Hayes? Is that right? Abraham Hicks. <laughs> Great motivational videos on YouTube. Thank you. Okay, so, um, and remember this too, that while the rich are hanging out with the rich or the wealthy um, and the poor are hanging out with the poor, the poor, the poor mentality I'm talking they're going to be talking about other people when they're together, aren't they? They're going to be judging and criticizing others. They're going to be judging and criticizing the wealthy and successful. Those will be their conversations. I'm sorry, but I don't want to be part of that. I want to be part of the group who is saying, how can we create impact in the world? How can we start a nonprofit or a foundation? How can we support a local cause? I'm going to tell you, the people that I've been around that are wealthy, they are almost 100% across the board are part of nonprofits. They are charitable. They give big. They're part of fundraisers, right? There's a reason. That's what they're talking about instead of talking about so-and-so who succeeded and did something, blah, 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 right? You guys know, you've heard this, I am certain of it. And, and how am I certain? Because I used to be one of the people that sat around and talked about other people like this. <laughs> okay, and here's the other thing. It's the ego that is making the judgment to make yourself feel safe. If you're finding yourself criticizing others' success or being jealous, it's your ego, isn't it? That is creating the story that you're telling yourself or the commiserating that you're doing with the people you're with about, oh, poor me, right? It's your ego. And remember what ego is, my friends? Edging God out. That's it. It's the humanness in you. You gotta rise above it. The beauty of it is you get a choice and you can do it. We all can. So I want you, instead of judging others or criticizing, I want you to um, look at wealthy people and think to yourself, I wanna get to know them. I wanna get to know how they think. I wanna get to know what are their routines that set them up for success every day. I guarantee you they have a morning routine. They prioritize exercise. They prioritize their nutrition right and they prioritize working 
when they're doing their work, they do the tasks that move them towards their goal first and foremost. They don't go onto Facebook and scroll the news feed and watch the videos, do they? <laughs> okay, so instead, um, I'm just reading my notes, instead of saying, wow, that successful person is so special or so lucky or they just knew so-and-so or their parents were rich or whatever, story, 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 right? Instead, become conscious of your thoughts and your awarenesses. Don't judge yourself for having the thoughts, but instead, instead, have the awareness and think, okay, I'm in judgment. I'm gonna bless them. In that very moment, you bless them, okay? And then say, if they can do it, I can do it. Dear God, give me, this, give me the vision, give me the path, to let me take the steps. Okay, become aware of your judgments when you see or hear a wealthy person. If you are judging in any way or if you see, you see a wealthy person driving down the road or you drive past a wealthy, nice home, what is it that you're creating in your head? Yeah, it's a story. Okay, so we're just having this awareness this, this month. Your jealousy, envy, and judgment of wealthy people will never create wealth in your life because you will self-sabotage as a result because your subconscious mind will say, I do not want to be selfish or whatever. I mean, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, If you have a judgment, your subconscious mind is going to be saying, I don't want that in my life because you've said it for those people, therefore you believe it's true for people who are wealthy, and therefore you will not become wealthy because you do not want that. Does that make sense? I know that's a little bit of bigger picture thinking, but um, work this out through your journaling this week in meditation, and I think you'll hit upon what I'm trying to get across. <laughs> okay, do you guys have any questions? You want some more homework? I've got some more tips if you want. Click the share button. There's lots of good quality info in this video for sure. Um, so. Here is some homework. Read some biographies of those who have become super wealthy. Get to know them. And see, how did they think? What do they do? Read the biographies, okay? Then, I want you to identify where you may be judging others or yourself because you, it could also just be yourself that you're judging, right? And God hasn't designed you to do that either because you're not meant to judge and neither am I. <laughs> We're not meant to judge others or ourselves. Um, and then stop watching trash TV, scrolling Facebook, and watching the news. Okay? Um, Ruby, I read all the time. And yes, Think and Grow Rich on Audible is on my um, on my audiobook so I listen to that I listen to the drama of the gifted child the codependent no more the science of getting rich conscious language <laughs> um, there's so many amazing books also biographies right biographies of people who have succeeded in the world are very important because I want you again to realize it is the way the person thinks when they become successful when they create huge impact in the world it's what they think it is because they believe they are meant to do that great thing that's not because they're specially worthy right that's just a BS story don't tell yourself that um, it's not because they had some easy life that's not true it, you can be wealthy or you can be poor and you're still going to have problems and challenges and issues, guaranteed, okay? So, the most important thing for you to realize is that you must become aware of the way you think because what you think about will come about. What you focus on grows. Where your focus goes, energy flows, right? So, when we change our mind, we change our life. Yes, thanks Michelle, that's so good. Ruth, what's your favorite female bio? Um, let me think. Sheryl Sandberg has a really good one. Love, I love um, Gabby Bernstein. Um, Oprah, of course. Jeez, I'm gonna have to think that through and come back and tell you. And 
You Are a Badass is another really good book. It's written by one of my life coaching friends. Um, yeah, so Jazzy said, um, oh yeah, Jazzy, didn't you say a moment ago you were feeling in a slump? Yeah, I understand feeling in a slump. And I was recently feeling in a slump too. In fact, I got sick last week, so feeling much better now. But what I know when I'm feeling in a slump is self-care is super important. So maybe you need to go to the spa, right? Spoil yourself. Feel luxurious. At least one, once a month, you guys. This is another great challenge for you. Is don't just work, 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 work all the time. But actually schedule a time where you can go and feel luxurious. Feel wealthy. So maybe you go and, and have a little tea date in the nicest hotel lobby in your town. Maybe you go to the spa. Maybe you get a pedicure or a massage. Okay? And then you can find yourself in that feeling of abundance because that's what you want to create in your life, right? And when you take the time to relax and enjoy just the moment, you will create more of that because your subconscious mind wants that too, right? And so sometimes through the re rewiring of our brains, we have to allow ourselves the luxuries that we haven't allowed ourselves because we've always said, I'm too poor and I can't afford it. Well, if that's the truth, if that's the story you've been spinning, you got to look at where are you spending your money that's not creating the life that you desire. <laughs> and you reallocate that money to where it's going to serve you. And that's taking care of you. Okay? That is you. Maybe that means you need to hire somebody to clean your house. I will tell you, there are women out there, or, and men too, that um, that is their business. And so we don't need to feel bad for hiring someone to clean our house, even though we could do it perfectly well ourselves. But it gives us the creative freedom to do what we're meant to do in the world. And we feel a little bit more luxurious and abundant when we have someone else taking care of that for us. And it doesn't take our personality, does it? So... Now, um, on that note, <laughs> there are women or, and men, like I said, that is their business. They feel happy doing it. I was that woman cleaning houses in my 20s. I'm sure glad someone gave me the job, <laughs> right? So, yes, um, let me look here. Okay, so also this week, I want you to pay attention to how you receive compliments. Do you deflect them? Or do you say thank you and accept them? Or do you say thank you and then say but, da 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 da? No. This week your challenge is to receive the compliment. Don't deflect it. Don't create a reason why you shouldn't accept the compliment. Feel where you're feeling in your heart if it creates tension in your body to receive a compliment. Because I'll tell you what, wealthy people can receive and give. That's why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Because the wealthy can receive, right? So. Yes, we will accept the compliments this week and we will give compliments freely as well. Okay? Um, <clears throat> also, celebrate all money that comes in. All money. Doesn't matter if it's an $8 check. Say thank you, God, for the abundance in the world. Okay? I am, will I am willing to receive more in my life. It works so well, you guys. Acknowledge all money. Maybe you find a quarter. Acknowledge it. Be thankful for it. And again, finally, your most favorite um, challenge is the self-care. Go and do something to splurge on yourself and just enjoy that time. And don't go on your phone, don't worry about anything, but truly enjoy the abundance in your life, okay? That might be going and having a cup of tea somewhere, and like I said, it might be going to the spa. That's why you see I regularly go to the spa and I incorporate the spa in my retreats because I think it's so important to feel taken care of in that way and to really be able to unplug and to really just let your body relax. It's so important. Okay, so with that, I'm going to let you all go. Unless you have a question, go ahead and type it in the comments. Yay! So this is the, uh, Facebook notified me that you guys are loving the video. <laughs> if you love today's topic, comment below and let me know. Okay? And if I miss your comments, I'll come back and interact with you later. So thank you for clicking the share button. Thank you for hopping on the video today. Thank you for stepping in to the bun abundance in your life and living the life that you're meant to live. Because when more of us do that, we make a better world, don't we? So thanks again. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.